Today I'd like to show you what's in my portable art supply kit that I carry with me just about everywhere I go. My primary sketching mediums are pen and ink, watercolor, or a combination of both. And this set allows me to do everything from quick sketches to longer, more finished watercolor paintings. These materials have gone through many years of trial and error of things being tested and discarded until I've come upon what I feel is the best balance of versatility, functionality, and portability. In other words, through quite a few years of refinement, I've come upon a set that has just enough things in it to sketch and paint comfortably, where I don't feel like I'm sacrificing anything for the sake of keeping things compact. Again, the idea here is to have something I can grab wherever I'm going, if there's even the slightest possibility that I'll be able to draw. Speaking for myself, it actually makes the process of having to go somewhere boring appealing. After all, what better opportunity is there to draw people than at a DMV or a baseball match, for instance? Look, having a portable set like this is absolutely essential to keeping an art practice. We all lead very busy lives, and often our time in our studios is limited. Keeping a set of supplies next to you at all times will allow you to get in a few minutes of drawing here and there throughout the day, which over a period of a week can accumulate to hours and hours of valuable time spent drawing and painting, developing your ideas, and most importantly, growing as an artist. So in this video, I'm going to do a what's in my pencil case video. I'm going through, I'm going to go through everything in this case and explain why I chose each item. And hopefully this will be useful for those of you that are thinking of putting together a set like this. It might end up saving you quite a bit of time and expense. Of course, ultimately, depending on the kind of work you will be doing, it'll be up to you to decide what to put in your case. And at the very least, it's my hope that this video will spur on that process. Let's start with the case itself. This is a smart fit double pen case made by Lihit Lab, and even though it was only $16, after three years of fairly rough and heavy use, I found it to be quite sturdy. The best thing about it is its perfect size. It's eight and a half inches long, four inches wide, and about two inches deep, just big enough to carry everything I need and absolutely nothing more. It has two compartments. One of the compartments opens up all the way and has pockets on both sides, which are perfect for pens and brushes. The other compartment doesn't open up all the way, which makes it better for storing larger items, such as my watercolor set. Now, let's talk about the fountain pens first. These are all Twisby Ecos, and I'd like to explain why I consider them to be the absolute cho best choice for artists in a portable art supply kit like this one. Uh, as I see it, there are six qualities that one must consider in a fountain pen that is going in a portable kit. The first one, of course, is the nib. In the case of the Twisbys, they use a very high quality steel nib made by Yovo. Uh, which is a German manufacturer whose nibs are used in quite a few high-end fountain pen brands. These nibs are quite smooth and work well on a very large variety of different papers, even cold press watercolor paper. And though the nibs are stiff, they do offer a touch of line variation with pressure, which makes them better for drawing than, let's say, a Micron or another pen that offers no line variation at all. One thing I really like about this pen is that it writes a little bit on the dry side, meaning that it doesn't put down a lot of ink, which will take a long time to dry. This is particularly important if you're planning on using the pen in combination with watercolors. Now, the second consideration is ink capacity. Uh, the Echoes have a built-in filling mechanism that allows it to hold quite a bit of ink, up to 2.5 milliliters. Now, while getting a full fill takes a bit of work, it still means you can fill your pens, let's say, every two to three weeks with regular use and not really worry that you're going to run out. Considering that a standard cartridge holds less than one milliliter of ink, like 0.8 milliliters of ink, uh, that's a pretty huge advantage. Furthermore, these pens are clear, so it's very easy to see exactly what kind of ink you have in your pen and how much you have left. And that's something kind of difficult to do if the pen uses a cartridge or is simply opaque. Now, the third is ergonomics. This, of course, is subjective, but I find that the pen is very comfortable to use, not too light, not too heavy. It has a section that is long enough so that my fingers don't touch the threads. It posts very securely with a rubber ring in the back, and it's pretty well balanced, both posted and unposted. Uh, personally, I really like the fact that it's slender enough so that I can sneak my fingers further up the pen, which is really useful if you're sketching really light, uh, at the beginning of your drawing. Anyway, uh, for my hand, uh, this is just an absolutely perfect fit. Now, uh, the fourth thing, the fourth quality, is reliability and durability. Um, this pen never has hard starts, never leaks, or burps, even when you're shaking it around in a portable case like this. Uh, though people have complained about Twisby cracking, I believe those issues have been resolved. At any rate, I've had this particular Eco for at least three years, and it has withstood quite heavy use, even abuse and I, for one, have not had any issues at all. 
Now the fifth is also really important, ease of cleaning and maintenance. These pens are designed to disassemble so it can be cleaned out very easily. This is important if you change inks a lot like I do. The feeds on these pens, this is the plastic part that gives ink to the nib, uh, can be pulled out, which again makes it really easy to clean. Um, it also means that I can comfortably fill these pens with ink that has a tendency to clog, such as some kind of waterproof ink, like uh, say like platinum carbon black. Um, I don't have to worry that the pen is going to clog and I'm not going to be able to clean it out completely. The sixth quality is also really important. It's price. These pens cost around $30, uh, which I understand for those of you that use microns is on the expensive side, but these are not disposable, right? They can be used for many, many years. So I think over time, uh, the price pays for itself. Um, and so because these pens are relatively inexpensive, I don't have to stress that I'm carrying around a super expensive pen, such as, uh, for instance, like this Pilot Falcon, which is a really nice pen, which I do carry with me occasionally, but look, it runs about $150, so most of the time, a pen like this is going to stay in my studio. Now, it will be pretty sad if I lose this case, but at least I won't have to take out a bank loan to replace everything in it. Now that you know my reasons for carrying the Twisby Ecos, let's talk about why I have so many of them. The first three have nibs of different widths, an extra fine, a medium, and a broad. So here is an extra fine. You can see that with pressure, I can get a little bit of line variation. Up, oh, a little bit hard to see here. Let's see, there we go, okay. So that's going to be extra fine. Then we're going to have a medium here. You can see again, you can, with some pressure, tease a little bit of line variation out of this nib. And then we have a broad. pretty thick line that goes even thicker. Um, now, my preferred drawing size for most of my pen and ink work is the extra fine, but I find with watercolor you have to sometimes ink a little bit heavier at the beginning because a really light line like this might get lost underneath all of the washes. Um, that's where the other two pens are useful, particularly when you're drawing a landscape where you have to use different thicknesses to represent distance. So for instance, I can use my extra fine to sketch in some clouds in the distance, maybe a mountain range or two going this way. All right, and then I can switch to my medium to put in, let's say, like a tree in the middle ground. That looks more like broccoli, but okay. Weird looking tree, a pond, all right? And then for the foreground, I can switch to my thicker broad and put in some kind of foreground element. Let's see, like that. Now, all these pens are inked with absolutely my favorite ink, which is platinum carbon black. Now, I distinguish these pens with a little bit of tape. Uh, now, these Twisbees do come in quite a few different colors and I don't know, thinking about it, I probably should have bought different colors for these. Um, but um, I don't know. Uh, this might be a little bit OCD, but for me, I personally feel compelled to use ink that matches the color of the pen. So if I've got a pen that is green, for some reason I feel like only using green ink in it, or an orange pen, orange ink, so on and so forth. Um, again, this is obviously personal preference, but uh, clear and black pens don't seem to induce that compulsion in me. So if I want to put a red ink in this, it doesn't bother me that um, the pen has some kind of like green cap on it. Um, okay, so those are the three clear pens. Again, distinguished with little bands, but uh, you know, yeah, maybe you should buy different colors for these. Um, now let's talk about this one. Um, this black Eco has an unusual nib in it, which is called a food. This food nib has an unusual property in that I can create different thicknesses of lines based on an angle, the angle that I'm holding the pen. So a vertical stroke like this is going to create an extra fine line. 
And then if I want to go a little bit thicker, I can change the angle and go to, you can see how much thicker the line is than even the broad. This is really great for landscape drawing, for figure drawing, um, really, really versatile nib. Um, if you want to learn more about these food pens, I'll put a link at the bottom of this video to a video that discusses uh, everything about food nibs and gives all the different recommendations. Um, I had to custom order this nib to fit the Eco uh, from a Spanish company called uh, FP Nibs. So this is a Eco with a food nib, uh, one of my favorite nibs with my absolutely favorite pen body for portable uh, portable sketching. This white Twisby Eco is filled with waterproof white ink made by Detrimentus. Um, I often use this on tone paper. It works really well. I also sometimes, sometimes use this to add little highlights or little white details to my watercolor paintings. Though I do have white uh, opaque watercolor in my watercolor set for that purpose, I find that sometimes for quick sketching using this pen is a little more convenient. Now it is waterproof so you want to make sure you use it in a pen that can be cleaned out easily and then this ink tends to write a little bit on the dry side so this ink will work a little bit better in your medium and your broads than perhaps your extra fines. Um, okay so that is a survey of my fountain pens. Let's put them all back and now we can talk about these two mechanical pencils. I prefer mechanical pencils to wood case pencils for two important reasons. First of all, they're sturdier, which is important in a portable case. And best of all, they don't require sharpening. Not that carrying around a sharpener is such a big problem, but it's one extra thing I have to carry around with me. And this is all about keeping things as compact as possible after all. Plus, where do you dump all those shavings? Both of these are made by Rotring. They're the Pro Gear. Uh, the silver one is a 0.5 and this black one is a two millimeter clutch. I find the combination of these two fulfill all of my graphite pencil needs, even if I want to do a fully rendered graphite drawing. Most of the time, however, I use these to sketch in my compositions. The two millimeter is very good for roughing in your drawing really loosely, and the 0.5 is really good for putting in finer details in your sketch. Both these pencils have two B leads, by the way. I find that the harder leads will tend to score your delicate watercolor paper, so it's like a 2H might create little grooves, where Whereas a 4B, a softer lead, might end up breaking, it might be a little bit too fragile for your mechanical pencils, and we'll put down a line that might be a little more difficult to correct. I really like the build quality, the weight, and the ergonomics of these pencils. Uh, the 0.5 has a retractable tip, as you can see here, which is really good and makes it more portable than the Rotring 600. And I do have a Rotring 800, which has an even more retractable point. But I find that the Pro Gear is more affordable, which makes it better for carrying around everywhere. Look, I've used quite a few different mechanical pencils over the years and find myself gravitating towards the Pro Gear, sometimes for very little, almost inconsequential reasons. So for instance, uh, this is a Graph Gear 1000, which I also use quite often. And it also ranks really highly among artists um, who use mechanical pencils. Um, it's well engineered. Uh, it has a hardness indicator, which the Rotring Pro Gear doesn't. Um, right here. Um, but I find that in this case the clip kind of gets in the way. Uh, it's a little bit annoying, um, which is why I don't use it. Um, I also have a Rotary 800 clutch, which is really nice. It has an all brass construction. It has about the same weight, uh, but again, it's twice the price of the Pro Gear and also tends to stay in the studio. Okay, now let's talk about these water brushes. Uh, if you've never seen one, these are synthetic hair brushes that are attached to kind of like a fountain pen like feed and a water reservoir in the handle. I used to scoff at these as being entirely inferior to real brushes, and they absolutely are, unless you're out and about and don't have access to water or want to do a quick sketch. Um, they're really great for doing quick work. Uh, however, if you're planning on doing more elaborate watercolor and you want a little bit more control, then you still need to rely on your regular brushes. So I have these two rather expensive Kalinsky Red Sable brushes that are made by Escoda. Uh, this one is about one eighth of an inch. This one is about a quarter of an inch. 
Um, yes, they're pricey, but I find that really nothing quite compares to the snappiness and sharpness of sable brushes. They're also quite durable, which means that if I take care of them, they keep their point longer than cheaper brushes, so over the long run, they're actually a great value. Um, now, for my larger brush, I use what's called a mop. Um, this is a synthetic hair brush. It's made by Princeton. This is their Neptune line. Um, this brush is really good for filling in large areas. So it doesn't have to be particularly pointy. It just needs to hold a lot of wash, which it does really well. So I find that these three brushes uh, do a pretty good job of um, handling my painting requirements for anything under, let's say, 11 by 14. If I'm planning on working larger, I'll slip in one or two blush brushes that are a little bit larger. So for instance, maybe like a brush this size, right? And maybe even a brush like this, just to give me a little bit more access to larger washes. What else do I have in this set? Well, I have a clear plastic ruler. Uh, this has been cut off from a larger 24 inch or maybe a 36 inch ruler. Um, I really like the fact that it's clear and has a grid, which helps me with right angles. I mostly don't rely on rulers when I draw, but having one to draw the occasional straight line comes in handy. We have a little pocket here as well, which holds two different kinds of erasers. I have a little hard eraser, a white nylon eraser, uh, probably made by Stadler. And then I've got a kneaded eraser. Which one I use depends on the kind of paper. If I'm using a more delicate watercolor paper, I'll rely on the kneaded eraser. But for a more durable multimedia paper where I really need to erase out the lines much more, a hard eraser is better. Now let's look at the second compartment in this case where I keep my watercolor set. This is a 16 half pound metal palette from the company called Whiskey Painters. The great thing about this set is that even though it's designed to fit 16 half pans, you can also squeeze pans into the center, uh, which is what I've done here. Uh, as you can see, I filled the metal section with full pans where I've squeezed out colors that I use more frequently. If you'd like to know more about my palette selection, how I chose my colors, I'll leave a, a video down below that covers that topic. The great thing about the Lihit Lab case is that it can also fit a larger palette like this 24 half pan set. Now, the main advantage of the larger set over the smaller one actually isn't the larger number of colors because the smaller set actually holds more colors than this one if you use the middle section. The main advantage is the larger mixing area. With the smaller set, I find myself constantly having to clean the palette when I'm doing larger watercolor paintings, which can get a little bit annoying over time. The larger palette area also allows me to mix up larger wash amounts. So if I'm doing a larger, longer watercolor painting, I'll carry this set with me. And then if I'm doing kind of quicker sketch work, smaller work in my sketchbook, then I'll carry around the smaller set. Okay, so what else do I carry in that second compartment? Uh, this is pretty useful. A little collapsible water cup like this. Uh, sometimes you find them at like uh, pet supply stores or uh, camping supply stores as well. And then this is also really, really important. I like to carry a couple of sheets of really sturdy and absorbent paper towel. Uh, using a good brand of paper towel is really important um, because it allows you to control how much water is on the brush to quickly make corrections. Um, with a cheaper paper towel, you'll find that it starts to fray or simply is not absorbent enough to do the job. Um, okay, uh, what else? What else, what else, what else? Look, I don't carry water in this case. Uh, even though there are small little plastic vials you can use that might fit into a case like this, um, I personally go through quite a bit of water when I paint, so having a small, vi small vial uh, to me feels rather useless. I've got my water brushes, and then usually I carry around a bottle of water uh, for that purpose. So there's a survey of my portable art supply kit. It has everything I need to make art other than water and a drawing surface. I hope that you found this video useful and that it spurs you to start thinking about putting together a kit perfectly suited for the kind of work that you want to do.